Welcome to the show, my name's Ewan Saunders. For today's episode of Developers Corner, and in the light of the federal government's recent axing of a key plank of support for the game development industry, I thought I'd interview a graduate of games development for his views. Miles Whitaker graduated in a Bachelor of Interactive Entertainment with a major in games programming last year. I asked Miles what he thought of the axing of the Australian Interactive Games Fund and what that will mean for the industry. Well, at the moment, it's um, my understanding is that a lot of it's in recovery after the recession when it basically tanked. Um, looking looking back at the effects of what happened after the recession with the collapse, um, a large portion of the industry here was actually um, contracts from international developers getting Australian developers to do things like movie tie-ins and book tie-ins, those kind of games. Uh, with the collapse, a lot of those kind of companies, there's all these new indie companies coming up and the indie scene is really thriving here. And with the federal assistance coming in, or in Brisbane and Queensland specifically, but I guess to an extent around the rest of Australia, yeah. and with the federal assistance coming in, then those indies had a chance of actually making it big. I also asked Miles what the buzz was amongst his colleagues in response to the budget cuts. Pretty universally disappointed. Not hugely expected. I mean, um, the, the funding for our industry has been a long time in coming, um, from what I picked up, but and it, well, by the time it finally did come here, you know, look how long it lasted. Yeah, it's disappointing. I mean, um, uh, in my opinion, the funding was coming at a fairly crucial time. I mean, like, the, the industry isn't going to collapse overnight because of it, but with that funding, this fledgling, the, all the fledgling companies, all the new indie groups starting up, they could have they could have made somewhere gone somewhere big on the international stage. I asked Miles what would he like to see the federal government doing for the industry in Australia. More consultation for a start. Um, actually, treating the games industry as a as a serious industry, where you know you go through the full gamut. There's investment and there's returns on those investment for the um, for the people involved from a corporate side of things. So obviously, it's very small at the moment. And ideally, one day I'd like to see it grow into a much more mature industry. Hopefully with a little more um, consumer protection and oversight than in America and Europe at the moment. So what are the prospects for graduates today? The only realistic option is to start your own company, which a lot of people have been doing. And there's a lot of resources out there in terms of um, assistance and advice from games industry veterans. And there's a lot of disconnected talent floating around who, who, would, who are definitely on the lookout to get picked up by some of those pretty keen new startups. So I'd say um, it's positive, but just like any other startup, it's very hard. You know, it's very cutthroat, and it's very hard to survive just past that initial period before you get a, you know, a steady customer base and a paying product. And what advice does Miles have for recent graduates of games development? There's, if there's one thing I picked up over the time I was studying, it's that a lot of people are going into games with. Um, preconceived notions or, or potential misconceptions about a lot of things. One of them is the amount of work and effort which you need to put in to make a career out of it. Another one is um, job prospects because mm. <laughs> like, like a lot of other fields there's a lot of highly skilled professionals out there working very hard and looking very promising to potential employers but there aren't that many positions going. That brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for joining us and I hope to see you next time.